supreme lord eternal truth let us obey thee alone and live according to truth paramo cha prabhu satyam nityatvam eva kevalam anubhartha mahi satyam anujivam kevalam om shanti hi shanti hi shanti namaste good morning vande matram welcome all of you the topic of this morning's discussion will be on experience of cosmic consciousness a um, bright topic of course it is very rare topic to the many sadhakas to the ignorant people they don't know what is this cosmic consciousness and all but thing is that even if some people who are pursuing almost it will be a um, hard topic for them but thing is that uh, it is required to know the real um, purpose of this cosmic consciousness and the experience uh, how the experience comes and what is the change what is the reality of behind the experience of um, cosmic consciousness of course we are going to discuss initially we have um, discussed it on cosmic consciousness cosmic consciousness couple of topics we have already discussed in this english version of course in english and odia mixed this version also we have discussed uh, but here we'll take an uh, in brief on, on experience of the cosmic consciousness steering the course uh, beautifully when one has the cosmic consciousness marvelous quoting when one has the cosmic consciousness one can feel the cosmic self in of as one's own self one can feel the cosmic self as one's own self one can feel one with uh, other things in cosmos number 3 one can feel all the forces of nature as moving in oneself number 4 all selves as one's own self there is no why except that uh, it is so since all is the one so beautiful definition i will try to quote it again when one has the cosmic consciousness how he will claim we have read some many many times we have heard the talks we have attended the classes even sometimes we have also delivered speeches and all so cosmic consciousness that is a different but thing is that we are talking about the experience one the realization experience of course still in the course beautifully one number one one can feel the cosmic self as one's own self number one number two one can feel one with uh, other beings in the cosmos number 3 one can feel all the forces of nature as uh, moving in as moving in one self number 4 all selves as one's own self these are the feelings we must feel no feel then asir in the tries to explain all is in one the all is in the self when identified with the universal self condition when identified with the universal self all self all is in you the example you can take uh, all self in mind self yourself or you you in uh, yourself in all, all. Uh, that, that the example of krishna when he was taking the pen, uh, some earth uh, petal pelt uh, mother goes and to actually bring it um, out so when mother tries to bring it out opening the krishna's bal krishna's um, face of course mouth then uh, jasoda finds mother jasoda finds the entire universe in himself that is the vishwarupa darshan so he could find that all is in himself and himself in all even the outwardly we have seen arjuna saw the vishwarupa in the great guru khetra mahabharat was so it was external and so everything in you and you in everything that is the main self main concept all is in the self when identified with the universal self all is in you also the microcosm reproduces the macrocosm so all is present in each though all is not expressed and can't be in the surface consciousness you have to go deep you, you, deep within you have to realize yourself you have to be witness and you must uh, you know, have the experience everything acts in the self the whole play of nature takes place in the self in the divine the self contains the universe same principle all is in our yourself yourself in all divine in all and uh, um, everything is divine the self is being not a being 
Self is being, not a being. By self, it is meant the conscious essential existence, one in all. The conscious um, essential existence, one in all. So here in the course again, in the, sometimes we get confused with over mind and undertake over mind as the cosmic consciousness that experience here in the uh, course here. The cosmic consciousness does not belong to over mind in the essence, especial. It covers all the planes. Like mind, vital, physical, it covers all. Man is shut up at present in his surface individual consciousness and knows the world only. Only on the surface, rather than the surface itself, it knows nothing. Only through his outward mind and senses, and by interpreting their contacts with the world, with that surface only man stays and the man tries to interpret. But here, when we are coming to the yoga, by yoga, there is um, there one can open in him. Uh, by yoga, there can open in him a consciousness which becomes one with the that of the world. He becomes directly aware of the universal being, universal status, states, universal force and power, universal mind, life and matter, and lives in the consciousness, um, conscious relation with all these things. Universal mind, universal life, universal matter, universal power, universal force, and uh, with a conscious relation with these things. He is then said to have cosmic consciousness, not confined to over mind. Then again, Sri Aurobindo tries to explain, Overmind is a basics of uh, total cosmic consciousness. It is a basis of total cosmic, cosmic consciousness, consciousness. But the cosmic consciousness itself can be felt in all the, in any plane, not only in the mind, but in mind, uh, life and matter, it can be experienced. Uh, there are all in the cosmic consciousness two sides. One contact with the preparation of the ordinary cosmic forces, and the second one, of course, um, beings behind this process. Um, that is um, in the ignorance. In the ignorance, other is the pre uh, perception of the cosmic truth, the realization of the universal, the one universal force, all the Vedantic truth of the one in all and all in one. All is the various aspects of the divine cosmic shakti. So one is ignorant side and another is luminous side that is the divine. One on the surface and another in the inner consciousness we have to go. So uh, we'll uh, proceed little bit um, further. We'll see the original substance when we are talking about the substance. The original substance of all the spirit is pure existence carrying in it the pure self-existence consciousness. The original substance of all the spirit is pure existence carrying in it, pure um, existence, and it carries inside it pure self-existence consciousness, the cosmic consciousness and force, the pure self-existence, ananda, these are the original substance of, the, of the, all the spirit. Everything is purity, there is uh, only pure purity of consciousness, force, pure self-existence, uh, existent ananda. When we talk of the substance, what does it mean? The substance and the being are the same thing. To, uh, till now we have used two um, words like uh, being and substance. Still in the course, your substance and beings are the same thing. In the creation, they can be looked upon as two aspects of the spirit, but the entirely same thing. The, what then, then last, again we will come to the point of that self is essentially the universal. Many times we um, pronounce, we uh, come across the term self, capital S, is essentially universal. The individualized self, self is only the universal experience from or in an individual center. The individual, it is, is confined to individual, but uh, self is actually universal, that is the basic difference. If uh, you have, uh, if what you have realized is not felt in uh, to be one in all, then it is not the Atma. So everything one in all, all in one, that experience has to be there, that is the Atma. It is the central being not revealing its universal aspect as Atma, central being, not at revealing, because it is now in a passive state, in a con concealed state. The self is felt either as universal, all in all, or as the universalized universe, individual, the same essence of the other, extended everywhere from each being but centered here, of course. 
the center is a way of speaking because no physical center usually is there you can so you can find that is no particular center is there the central point is there so that you can uh, put a uh, with the radius you can draw a circle it is not there only the actions take place around the individual this around the individual action takes place that is the virtual center central point the usual experience of the impersonal two aspects we seeing uh, one is personal one is impersonal the uni usual experience of the impersonal is that it is everywhere without form limitation in the place or time everywhere you can find but without form or limitation then this uh, impersonal divine has no abode and can't have when we are talking of the impersonal two aspects one is impersonal aspect another is personal as aspect the impersonal divine has no abode and can't have never i mean impossible it is all pervading if still in the course even that is also sure in the tries to explain in brief in um, certitude with certitude if one anyone says the impersonal divine has its abode in the heart he is asked um, he can be asked uh, what he means by the impersonal divine many people some people claim it is there is the abode is in the heart so sri aurobindo asked them just ask go and ask what they understand by the word impersonal divine then again in the cosmic consciousness the personal i disappears no point for personal i no chance for the ego self on on one self on the all the i which alone exists is not that of the person the individualized i but universalized i identical with the cosmic self the atma so individual i must be replaced by the universal i that is the ananda that is the cosmic self so things coming um, what is the experience that is the point of liberation what will remain after the liberation of the central being not of the ego the liberation of the central being not of the ego the central being will live in the consciousness of the divine everywhere and in all other beings also so it will not have the consciousness of the separate ego there is no chance for the ego but the one center among the many of the divine multiplicity so liberation is the first necessity about the liberation that is the first necessity to live in the peace silence purity freedom of the self that liberation must be is a must along with that or afterwards if one wakes in the cosmic consciousness then one can be free at one with all things to have the cosmic consciousness here when the tries to explain again and again to have the cosmic consciousness without liberation is possible not 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 impossible it is possible but there are no freedom anywhere in the being from the lower nature and one may become one's extended consciousness in the playground of the all things without being able to either in the free or master so it is just an extension possible it is just extension not so that he but problem is that he can uh, be free or master of himself on the other hand if there is has been self realization if it is the condition it is fulfilled then what happens one part of the being that remains untouched amid the play of the cosmic force while if the peace and purity of the self has been established in the whole inner consciousness then outer touches of the lower natures can come to our power so this will be untouched undisturbed this is the advantage of sheer self realization preceding to cosmic consciousness and supporting supporting it the widening of the consciousness so as to be at one with the individual infinity is the important stage for the sadhana widening of consciousness that's wideness is felt as um, as if the great um, uh, substantial vastness full of power and uh, giving the same oneness free and infinity and uh, um, same to the top to bottom at the beginning it does not come the experience of the wideness like the other experiences come only from time to time not in a regular manner it is only afterwards that it becomes frequent and remains long till finally it settles and the consciousness remains always wide so that is the condition